Okay, so yesterday we talked about uh, the two types of damage that uh, rigid tubes will normally have on them. Either scratches are dense and their limitations. Now we're going to talk about, okay, let's say the damage is out of limits and we got to remove a section of tubing. That's what this uh, PowerPoint slide is talking about. Splicing of a damage section, section, basically meaning removing a damage section and putting in a repair piece of some, of some sort. Okay, so it only mentions three types here. There's really four types. Um, and I'm going to go through each one of those four types so you guys have, have seen them. Um, and then I also have posted some YouTube videos that goes a little more into detail because without being on campus and having visual um, demonstrations for you guys, I, I have to show YouTube videos of the people doing the exact same thing we would do on campus. So let's talk about the flared fittings first. What that's talking about is let's say you have this damaged section of a tube. What you can actually do is you can take your tube cutter and remove the damaged section by cutting out a piece. Once you've removed a damaged section, now you're gonna have to basically flare both these ends and put in, um, this is called a union, put in a union and then connect your flare, uh, your flared fittings to there. And that's what, that's what you're looking at here. The only thing is this one's kind of difficult because you have to, the calculation, this has to be exact because again, this is rigid tube, it doesn't give it all. So this has got to, this uh, union's got to be exactly fit in there. So that's uh, a way we can basically use flared fittings to repair the uh, damage section of tubings. That's what this first one's talking about. The second one is talking about, it's called flareless fittings. Now it's kind of weird. We got a backup in the PowerPoint. The PowerPoint actually talks about flareless fittings before it talks uh, about the damage sections here. But there's a really good YouTube video I posted of a guy doing flareless fittings and you're going to want to watch that because then you're gonna have the visuals to go with it. So I'm gonna back up and talk about flareless fittings. This is the one that's gonna take the longest because there's, there's a procedure to it. Um, so whenever you're doing flareless fitting, the, the flareless part means that you're not gonna be flaring a line. You still gotta prepare the line like you're going to to flare it, but basically you're gonna cut off the, uh, the damaged section and then you're gonna cut and then deburr the tube just like you were gonna flare it, but this time you're not gonna flare it. You're actually gonna take the, uh, now they make a tool, it's called a presetting tool. You can actually just use a steel union like I just showed you a minute ago that a union's a piece that connects two lines together. And, and I'm gonna go um, here to the example to try and show you guys how this works. Uh, this is basically uh, the setup of everything all in one slide. So you're gonna take a vise and you're gonna take a, a union and put the union in the vise. And like I said, there's a really good YouTube of this. It's gonna be a little harder for me to describe it, but I'll go through it. And you're going to take the tube and put it down into the union and you're going to take a uh it's called a a sleeve but this time the sleeve is actually going to get crimped or or swedged onto the line so what's going to end up happening is you're going to put the tube down inside this union and that's going to set the depth of where the um the uh sleeve is going to get crimped on the line and then you're going to have a, a sleeve on here and you're going to take a the b-nut here and you're going to tighten the b-nut down and then you're going to basically over torque the b-nut and it's going to take that uh, that sleeve and squish it down onto the line. Or another way of saying that is swedged or crimped onto the line. So then when you take it apart, you'll have the flareless fitting will be actually on the line. Um, and now you don't ever have to flare anything. It's actually just a, uh, it's a different type of fitting. But like I said, this is a really tough one for me to describe without um, without. Uh, having a, the, the equipment or, or be, being on site. So I'm going to strongly encourage you guys to watch the flareless fitting video. Uh, let's go back to that slide about the four ways of repairing tubes. Actually, there's only three mentioned. I went through the flareless fittings. I went through the uh, flared fittings. And you guys will do both of these. Um, you're going to do flared fittings in project one. Uh, project two, you're going to be doing bend, uh, bends of a line. Uh, and then in project three, we're going to damage the line. You're actually going to install flareless fittings. So if you don't have a strong understanding of what they are, uh, it's okay. We're going to be doing a hands-on project with that. Uh, but like I said, so you don't go into this project blind, uh, I would watch that video they, they, uh, on the video section. I've already put it into the uh, Blackboard course. The other one's called, a lot of people call it a bead and clamp. Here it's calling it flexible hose. Um, on the bead and clamp, let me back up and find that. That's another one that I got to go backwards to find. What it is, is you're actually going to be taking the piece of damaged tube and you're going to cut it out. And you're going to take the end of this line and you're going to use a tool. It's called a tube beater. And you're going to create a bead 
on each side. And the only reason the bead's there is because you're gonna slide a flexible hose over this bead and that bead. And you're gonna take, these are called hose clamps is what most people call them. And you're gonna take these clamps and what they're gonna do is they're gonna hold the flexible line. And you're basically connecting two rigid tubes with a flexible line. Now, there are some problems with this type of um, this type of repair. It's not good. You can't do it in high pressure or medium pressure applications. It's restricted to low pressure because it's limited to the, the pressure rating of the uh, flexible hose because this is going to fail before the rigid tube does. So this is not done very often. But And it does take a specialty tool. It's called a tube beater. And there is a really good YouTube video of this being done. So make sure you watch the video of the um ms photos fittings and make sure you watch the video of, it's called a bead and clamp or it's a two bead is what it's called and it's basically creating that ridge and when we get in the shop i have the equipment to do that if anybody wants to practice doing a two big bead that's not a problem i have that and then the last one is the one that is more common on the bigger planes um like commercial uh, either corporate or commercial type aircraft um and it's not even mentioned here you could really go ahead and put a d right here it's called swedge fittings and there's uh, definitely a really good video on that, but I'm gonna describe it to you the best I can. Basically on a swedge fitting, you're gonna have your two, let's say you have, let me go back so I have a visual. Um, let's say we have a damaged tube. I'm looking for the uh, damage section there. What you do is you actually cut the damage section out and you slide a, a little bit bigger tube over the top of this. And there's a machine that comes in and it's, and it's a hydraulic press and it squeezes that that section of tube that you slid over this here, it squeezes it down on the line. Some people call it a perma swedge, um, but it's it's actually swedged fittings is what they are, and that's that's the one that's more common on your on your commercial type aircraft and and uh, corporate jets. Um, but it does take a specialty machine. It takes a hydraulic press to squeeze it down. And like I said, I could talk about this all day, but if you watch that YouTube video on that, so I got three YouTube videos. I really strongly encourage you guys to watch the perma swedge which is the swedged on fittings, the bead and clamp, so you can see how a tube bead works, and the MS Frailist fittings. If you watch those three videos and you watch this video, you're gonna, that's about the best you can get without being on campus and, um, and uh, actually performing uh, these functions. Um, anyways, you guys, uh, we got a quiz coming up on Friday. Tomorrow we're gonna talk about uh, torquing uh, how to torque a line and um, and basically how to figure out what the torque would be. Uh, that's really all we have left in this section is the torque. And then on, on uh, Friday will be quiz number two. It's going to cover uh, damage repair and stuff like that of a tube. Make sure you guys are working on the worksheet. I'm, I'm noticing some of you have not even opened the worksheet. That's not good at the point because on Monday we're taking a test over this. And if you're putting this off, to, to studying this material and you're trying to do, uh, uh, this is gonna be a difficult test. I had to make the test a lot more difficult because it's open book. So I made it a lot more fill in the blank, things like that. I took out the multiple choice. So make sure that you guys are, are on staying on schedule. I'm telling you, that test is gonna be very difficult if you wait till Monday and try and learn all the material in one day. Probably not gonna happen. Okay, so be careful with that. Again, you guys be safe, wash those hands. Thank you.